Welcome to Huawei Firewall Multimedia Configuration Course. In this course, we will learn how to configure security policies. As we all know, that the basic function of a firewall is packet forwarding control. The next generation firewall primarily relies on security policies to implement this function. The security policies implement security checks on the traffic passing through the firewall. The firewall permits the traffic allowed by the security policies and discards the traffic that is not allowed. Now, let's see how to configure security policies. Choose policy. Security policy. Security policy. We can see there is a default security policy with all conditions set to any and action set to deny. If we try to edit it, we can change only its action. The matching conditions cannot be changed. What is the function of this default security policy? We know that traffic matches security policies from top to bottom and finally the default policy. If we configure a security policy that denies traffic from IP address 1.1.1.1 and change the action of the default policy to permit the firewall then will discard the traffic from IP address 1.1.1.1 and permit all the other traffic. Now, let's see what a security policy consists of. Generally, a security policy consists of matching conditions, an action, and a content security profile. The matching conditions of next generation firewalls are more diversified and granular than the traditional quintuple-based matching conditions. All matching conditions are optional. For example, if we create a security policy without setting any matching condition, then all matching conditions are any. Traffic must match all matching conditions to match a security policy. If the traffic matches a security policy, the firewall takes the specified action for the traffic. The action can be permit or deny. We can see that we need to configure content security only when the action is set to permit. When the action is set to deny, the content security configuration item is unavailable. To put it in another way, the firewall implements content security checks only on the traffic to be permitted. If the firewall determines to deny the traffic, it is unnecessary to inspect it. Now let me explain what each matching condition controls and when we should use it. The first matching conditions I will introduce are the source zone and destination zone, which indicate where the traffic comes from and where the traffic goes to. On traditional firewalls, security policies are divided into forwarding and local policies based on source and destination zones, and different configuration portals are available for them. The source and destination zones are mandatory matching conditions. The next generation firewalls blur the concepts of forwarding and local policies and provide only one configuration portal. The source and destination zones, as well as all the other matching conditions, are all optional. Besides, security policies on the next generation firewalls also support the configuration of multiple security zones. In this way, cross-multi-zone access can be configured at a time. Now, let me introduce the source address slash region, destination address slash region, and user matching conditions, which indicate who initiates the traffic and to whom the traffic is destined to. We can enter an IP address or IP address range, such as 1.1.1.1 slash 32 or 1.1.1.0 slash 24. If we need to add discontiguous IP addresses or IP address ranges, we can create an address group and reference the address group in the security policy. We can also set the user parameter to implement user-specific control. Of course, we need to define the user in advance and then reference it in the security policy. Set access mode or device to implement policy control 
four different types of XS authentication, or devices in TSMSSO scenarios. We can specify the services, and applications, to be permitted or denied. A service is usually identified by a protocol and a port number. We can select predefined services on the firewall. Predefined services are well-known services, such as HTTP, FTP, and Telnet. Of course, you can also customize services. If you know clearly what protocols and ports need to be denied, you can use service at the matching condition. However, the live network may have applications that use ephemeral ports to provide services. In such cases, using application as the matching condition can implement more effective traffic control. The next generation firewalls no longer rely on port numbers or protocols to identify applications. They can identify applications based on the characteristics of application layer data. For example, an FTP server may use an ephemeral port to provide services, and we need to deny access to this FTP server. However, we don't know the port number used by the FTP server. Therefore, we can't use service as the matching condition. FTP in service applies only to the FTP services that use port 21. Can we select FTP in application to control the access to the FTP server? Now, let's prove it. In the simulation network environment, suppose the PC and FTP server have been configured. We use the PC as an FTP client to access the FTP server. The FTP server provides services using port 2121, not well-known port 21. We hope to configure one security policy to block the PC access to the FTP server. Is it possible? Now we create a policy and set the source zone to trust. Destination zone to DMZ and destination address to the IP address 192.168.0.2 slash 32 of the FTP server. Because the FTP server provides services using port 2121, not port 21, selecting FTP in service cannot implement effective access control. But we can select FTP in application. Let's leave other matching conditions empty. Set the action to permit. And check whether the PC can access the FTP server. Yes, the PC can access the FTP server. We can see that the matching count of the security policy changes from 0 to 1, if we refresh it. This indicates that the security policy is matched. Now, we change the action to deny and check whether the PC can access the FTP server. The access fails. Let's see the matching count. After we refresh it, it changes from 0 to 1. OK. Now we are clear when to use service as the matching condition and when to use application. Schedule, as the name implies, is the time range during which the security policy takes effect. Note that the time range is timed on the basis of the system time on the firewall. As mentioned above, we need to configure content security only when the action is set to permit. The next generation firewall supports seven types of content security checks, including antivirus, intrusion prevention, URL filtering, file blocking, data filtering, application behavior control, and mail filtering. We can reference content security profiles based on different networking environments and requirements. We can select and edit existing profiles or create new profiles. We can also enable the logging function in security policies. From policy matching logs, we can determine which security policy is matched. Then we can verify the policy settings to see if the desired effect has achieved. If a fault occurs, 
we can use the logs to locate the fault. These are the policy matching logs during a certain time range. Each log records the log generation time, source and destination zones of the traffic, source and destination addresses, protocol, and application. However, if the firewall does not have any hard disk, the policy matching logs cannot be viewed. We need to use a network management device to view these logs. Similarly, after the session log function is enabled, the next generation firewall logs the sessions that match a security policy. To view session logs, we also need a network management device. The next generation firewalls have two aging time related concepts. Session aging time and persistent connection aging time. In actual networking environment, there might be some special services that have no packet transferred in a long period of time. In such cases, the firewall will clear such connections to avoid performance consumption. This is what we have mentioned, the session aging time. If an aging time is set for a session, and the session does not have any packet transferred in the specified period of time, the firewall deletes the session entry to release system resources. The session aging time here, is the aging time of the session, that matches a specific security policy. However, in some scenarios, the session entries of special services, such as database services, must be kept unaged for a long period time. Otherwise, the services will be interrupted. For such services, we need to configure persistent connection. The concepts of user-defined persistent connection and session aging time are the same, except that the user-defined persistent connection takes effect only on the TCP applications that match the specified policy, whereas the session aging time takes effect on both TCP and UDP applications that match the specified policy. Moreover, the persistent connection supports longer aging time than sessions. On this device, the persistent connection can last for up to 24,000 hours, whereas the session aging time can be set to a maximum of 65,535 seconds. After we have learned the matching conditions in a security policy, and in what conditions we need to use each matching condition, you may wonder if we need to configure multiple security policies which one we should configure first. Don't worry, let me explain. At first, we list the parameters of each security policy. For example, the matching conditions of security policies, policy 1, policy 2, and policy 3 are listed in rows 2, 3, and 4 of the table. Then we rank the security policies from the most specific, to the least specific. In the preceding example, if we compare the source zone, destination zone, source address slash region, destination address slash region, service, and schedule fields, the three security policies are the same, but if we compare the user field, management is configured for policy 1, and any for the other two policies. That is to say, the user fields of policy 2 and policy 3 are not configured. Therefore, Policy 1 has the most specific matching condition and should be ranked first. Then let's compare the application matching condition. For Policy 1 and Policy 2, this matching condition is set to the same value. But for Policy 2 and Policy 3, this field is set respectively to FTP and any. Therefore, Policy 2 has a more specific condition than Policy 3. Based on the preceding analysis, we rank policy 1 first, followed by policy 2 and policy 3. Then we configure these security policies one by one on the firewall. The policies configured earlier are placed on the front. The traffic then matches the security policies one by one based on the configuration order. Okay, this is the end of the course. Thank you for staying with us. Looking forward to seeing you next time.